Do you own an Android, so something that's basically not an iPhone? Well, you're in luck, because today I'm going to run through what Android Auto is, how to get it connected in a car, and some basic functionality, and potentially some cool updates coming to Android Auto in the future. But first and foremost, number one, what is Android Auto? Android Auto is basically a way of connecting your phone to your car, but giving it greater functionality than what Bluetooth offers. So Bluetooth is pretty good for, obviously, calls and playing music off your phone and text messages, but Android Auto enhances that even further by changing potentially what sat-nav you want to use, so you could use Google Maps from your phone onto the car screen, or even things like Spotify or Amazon Music or YouTube Music all on the car screen without you having to touch your phone when you're driving. But I guess the question is, why would you need to use your phone's sat-nav on the car screen when your car already has sat-nav? Well, it's down to personal preference. You yourself might actually prefer Google Maps and the routes it offers and the free live traffic that it offers over an inbuilt car's navigation system. So it's all down to user preference. Of course, you can choose what works for you. But of course, let's move on to how to get it connected in your car. So that sounds all pretty good, but what devices is it compatible with? Well, for the phone, you'll need to make sure it's running Android 8 or higher. So I've made sure I've updated this so I know that Android Auto has got the latest uh, features and fixes and that sort of thing. So Android 8 or higher. Now, when it comes to the car, you'll have to check with the car manufacturer just to make sure that it actually has it. Because sadly, Android Auto and Apple CarPlay and kind of smartphone integration in that sense isn't standard across the entire board. So you will need to check with the person who made your car. When it comes to uh, this particular car, this is a wired Android Auto connection. So I am gonna to need to use a cable. Now make sure you've got a high quality USB cable as well. Uh, when I say high quality, either the one that came with the uh, phone in the box, um, or just make sure you get one from a, a kind of good reputable brand, because um, some cables that come through, you know, some third party ones may only provide power and charge, but it also does need to transfer some data as in putting some elements and visual elements up to the screen. So quite often when you plug it in using a third party cable, it won't work. So um, make sure you've got a good cable. And most importantly, in some new cars, they also come with USB-C ports. Now, USB-C ports are fairly new. They've only come out over the past few years. This car does have them. But basically, we need to get one of these, which is a USB-C to USB adapter. Now, if you want this particular one, I use these all the time. I probably have about, I don't know, 12 at home or something like that, because I have a uh, MacBook which has USB-C, so I'm constantly using these. So um, if you want to get this one, there's a link in the description down below, just in case you want to get this one. So once you know that your car has Android Auto and your phone is compatible, we're going to get it plugged in. So let me just connect these two up. Now, in this particular car, there is a symbol that looks just like this. Um, this is the port that you need to use. So normally there's a specific USB or USB-C port you have to plug it into. So make sure you plug it into the correct ones. This one has um, a couple of USB-C ports. So I'm going to plug him in there. And then what we don't need to do is get to the phone. So let me just unlock this one. Now, when you first plug it in, you'll usually have a pop-up come up on the screen here just like this. Now, don't worry if it doesn't pop up. Sometimes you might need to go into some car settings and enable it. Um, uh, in this particular car, it's on the home screen and then under a thing called apps. And then you can find smartphone integration and Android Auto in there. But also make sure as well you follow all the prompts on the screen as well because uh, you just need to allow everything for it to connect. Now for the very first time when you're doing this, there is a setup that you do need to go through. So um, obviously make sure you're parked up when you do this. Obviously for data protection, that sort of thing, um, obviously if this is your own car, then you of course enable everything. But if it's just like a rental, you probably don't want to sync your contacts. So let's go through this setup menu and get to the next one. So once you're on the home screen, as I said, Android Auto literally just runs off of your phone. It's like an app within an app. So if you want to go back to your car manufacturer's uh, kind of multimedia system, all you do is either tap on the logo just here and it will go straight back to the original kind of multimedia system you have in the car. In this particular car, you can get back to Android Auto just on the top right just here. So if I click on that one, that'll go straight back in there. So I said, this is the Android Auto home screen. So uh, as I mentioned, it's running off of your phone all the time. So obviously you need to make sure you've got a data connection on. So if you're on like pay as you go, you might need to switch to monthly or something like that, just because obviously it streams all the latest maps and that sort of thing. And certainly if you're playing music, 
it'll stream music that way like through Spotify or other music apps and that sort of thing. So let's have a look at the maps. So in this particular car you can use the touchpad here or you can actually use it like a touch screen but kind of user preference. So of course here, as this is Google Maps and running off of your phone, if you want to use it, all you need to do is just tap on the search button and then you can type in relevant things on here. Then when you want to type anything in, you literally just type in postcodes on here like this, just like you would on your car, and then they'll come up on the uh, screen, just like that there. She will obviously talk to you and give you uh, directions, that sort of thing, and there is a handily a mute button uh, when you're on the road and you can literally tap it and it'll mute it. When you have typed in the postcode, you can literally just follow the uh, obviously prompts on the screen that show you exactly where to go. And if you ever need to cancel it, there's that little cross symbol just on the top up there. Now, as I mentioned earlier, Android Auto has a very unique experience, meaning you can use third-party apps in the car. Say, for example, you don't have music on your actual phone and you use Spotify, for example. If you go in here, this is how you can then browse your music on the screen which is pretty good because obviously you can't do that um, over Bluetooth. So it does have some unique perks and kind of benefits for when you use uh, Android Auto on the screen. And again, as always, if you want to go to the home screen, just tap the uh, little circle on the top right hand corner. Now you may have noticed on the right hand side, there is this kind of fixed dock. So on the top right hand corner, that little circle there is the home screen, which obviously comes to this one. Underneath is the maps. So of course I've got uh, Google Maps on here. Underneath that is media suggestions, so of course if you regularly use music on the car then that will pop up with certain suggestions and things you might want to listen to. Underneath that, the little bell is a notification centre, so if you get any text messages coming through, they'll appear right in there. And then one very unique thing on Android Auto is the Google Assistant. This is the bottom right hand button with the kind of multicolored uh, microphone there. So when you press this in, you can actually speak to your voice assistant, which most often is um, Google, which is actually really, really good. How are you doing? I was just talking to the toaster about how much fun you are. Is there anything you need? If not, we can just chat. Um, I'm just going to press the back button. <laughs> it's talking to the toaster, that's a bit odd. Well, I mean, yes, obviously as Google there, you can ask it loads of things um, from uh, navigating to places on Google Maps to obviously uh, setting reminders, tasks, calendar, things like that. So it's very, very useful because obviously um, with a car's voice assistant, most cars these days have voice assistants. You can give commands to like turn on heated seats and that sort of thing or um, navigate to places if you're using the car sat nav. But if you want to use your inbuilt phone's voice assistant, this is particularly useful, especially if you use Google Maps because you can navigate to places without having to type in postcodes. So let's give you an example. Navigate to BH152BD. Navigating to BH152BD. And it's as easy as that. And then just like before, if you need to cancel it, there's that big cross just there. Just tap that and it will cancel it. And um, then we can go back to the previous screen. Now after this, there is a news icon. So um, this is actually one up on Apple CarPlay. So if you don't know, Apple CarPlay is kind of the iPhone equivalent of this. And uh, obviously I use an iPhone um, daily. So that is my kind of go-to phone. Um, but Having used both, I would actually prefer a news icon because that doesn't exist on Apple CarPlay. Android Auto, there's actually a dedicated icon. So if we go in here, of course, then you can see and choose your preferred news channel and it will just read you like the latest headlines and that sort of thing. Going back to the previous screen, of course, next uh, icon across is phone. So if we go in here, this will, of course, bring up all of your uh, recent phone calls and your phone book. And this is how obviously you'd ring out uh, when using Android Auto. Because don't forget, obviously, Android Auto replaces your multimedia system. And of course, just like before, if you're going to answer any calls, there's a button on the steering wheel that you can usually use to answer any incoming calls. After that, uh, I mentioned that button earlier, which is the kind of going back to the car's multimedia system. So if you just tap that one, it'll go straight back to the car's inbuilt multimedia system. In this particular car, if you want to go back to Android Auto, you just tap that and it'll go straight back to the previous screen that you were on before. Now, next up is the calendar. Now, this is quite useful, especially if you live your life off of a calendar, squeezing in appointments and that sort of thing. But yes, if you go in here, this will show you all of your relevant appointments and events that you've saved for that particular day, which is obviously quite nice. Some cars have a built-in calendar where it can sync with um, Google and things like that, but obviously as this is just running off your phone, there's no need to do that because it's already there. 
Now after this is an app called Game Snacks. Now this is something that definitely doesn't exist on Apple CarPlay. So this is like kind of little mini games and things, which is what I'm guessing is if you are, um, I don't know, parked up somewhere waiting for someone. So uh, yes, you can literally just play a little mini game in here. Um, I obviously won't do that right the second, but nice to have that option, I guess. Now, of course, after this is messages. So this is particularly useful, of course, if you want to send a text message. Now, obviously, especially in certain states in America, texting and driving is certainly not allowed. And in the UK, you are not allowed to touch your phone at all. So this is obviously quite good because you can text people back hands free. So if you tap on messages, obviously, I haven't texted anyone on this particular phone just yet. But on new, on the top right hand corner, you can recite a text message. And as you do this, it will all appear on the screen just like this so you can kind of see exactly what you're saying. Of course, after this is podcast, so if you listen to podcasts in the car like I do, then you can save all your favourite ones in there. And then just like the calendar, there is a reminders app as well. So as I haven't got any reminders set at this moment in time, if I tap this, I'm sure the Google Assistant will um, ask if I want to set any. What's the reminder? Edit this video after I finish filming. All right, edit this video after I finish filming. When do you want to be reminded? Mm, eight o'clock. All right, I'll remind you at 8 a.m. There we go, and it's as easy as that, hands free. Another touch after this is the settings icon. So obviously be sure to go in here to customize your Android Auto experience just that little bit more. There's various things in here with conversations with how messages are displayed. And most importantly as well, there's an option there for Android Auto to start automatically. And as well, you can also program it so it doesn't start the music automatically. So by default, when you plug it in, it's gonna start resuming playing your previous song. So particularly if you've got passengers in the car or it's first uh, thing in the morning, you might not want that. So this is how you can toggle it on and off. After this, there is a wallpaper. So on here, this is how you can actually customize your wallpaper on uh, on Android Auto. So, um, so we can go for a little dusk view there. Oh yeah, look at that, that's nice. In fact, there's a few more on there than Apple CarPlay. I think Apple CarPlay only has um, maybe even six, I think. Uh, but yeah, there's a few more on there to obviously customize. Again, it's all down to your kind of experience in the car. You can customize which element you want. And of course, the final two are weather and customize. So weather is particularly good if you just want a weather report. Again, one up on Apple CarPlay because um, on Apple CarPlay, you have to physically say to the voice assistant that you want a weather report. On this, it's just a simple press. Right now in Bournemouth, it's two degrees and mostly cloudy. Today, it'll be partly cloudy, with a forecast high of 4 and a low of minus 3. And then the final one is customised, so this is actually how you customise your kind of uh, icons in the order you want them. Now this is actually done on the phone, so obviously make sure you parked up when you do this. Um, so on your phone then, this is how you can customise all of the apps and obviously move them up and down. Say for example that you use the weather all the time, or even the podcast. As they're further down, you can move them to the top, just to make them a little bit easier to see. Yes guys, so there's a new update coming to Android Auto soon, and I believe it's going to be on Android 8.7, and it's called Cool Walk. And basically it offers some kind of split screen functionality, a bit like on Apple CarPlay. So uh, on Apple CarPlay, you can split the screen and use a thing called Dashboard, just like this, which is really, really good, because you can obviously have your music playing on one side and then maps on the other. So just saves you having to swap between the two. However, this is where it gets a little bit complicated because um, there are many, many different manufacturers um, that use Android. So I don't know what phones it's going to be compatible with. So um, if I hear any more, I'll post it onto my channel. And of course, as I have a, uh, an Android phone now, if I have an update come through that has Cool Walk, I'll be sure to do a video and show you, all of you guys the new updates and what it is. But it does look quite impressive. So if I do get that update, I'll be sure to cover it. So there we go guys, that is a quick look at Android Auto on your car. Now of course, if you have any questions, let me know down below. I'll try my best to answer them. And of course, about this new feature with Android Auto coming out soon, I'll be sure to cover that on my channel as long as it's compatible with the phone I've bought. Uh, if not, then I might have to buy a different phone just to make the video and cover a cool walk 
um, just a bit more detail. So it will be good to see this double widescreen uh, kind of display on this new update coming out. Guys, I'd like to give a huge shout out to Sandown Mercedes here as they help provide access to this awesome car so I can help film this video today. Of course, if you liked what you saw, hit that like button and that subscribe button and I will see you guys next time.